Hey everybody, this video is brought to you by Lenovo Cloud Computing. If you're looking for web hosting for your next project, I recommend you check them out. And I've been using them for over 10 years. It's what I use for my website, CodeHawk.com. So basically, if you're doing a game server, you're trying to build a website, whatever it is you're trying to do, they have solutions that can fit your needs. And here's just an example of what you get when you set up an account. You can actually set up your own operating system and you end up installing whatever you need for your specific project. Hey everybody, what's up? All right, so in this video, what I wanna talk about is I'm gonna show you guys how I quickly prototype code uh, these days, sometimes, not all the time, but it's just a way of basically saying, you don't need all the best tools. You don't need like Webpack, uh, Rollup, uh, TypeScript, even some of the latest JavaScript with Babel and all this stuff. Sometimes you just don't need all that. So really, if you wanted to get started developing and doing you know basic web development, I, I really feel like you should start with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So how do you get good with that? You got to practice and you got to just continue to practice. And I think you got to try to remove some of the hurdles and roadblocks in your way to make it as easy as possible. So that said, you only really need two tools in order to actually write code and actually start becoming a web developer here. Uh, you have the Chrome developer uh, or browser, and I actually think that the Chrome browser is probably, even if it's not as good as Mozilla's Firefox browser when it comes to development tools, Chrome is the most widely used browser by, uh, by far. So I think it's best to just go ahead and get started with developing in it uh, just because you want to make sure that anything you write is going to work in Chrome. And then you just need Visual Studio Code to actually write your code into, and that's really all you need. All right, so uh, here I have Visual Studio Code installed, opened up. I opened up a, an empty folder, and there's nothing in here right now. So we're just going to go ahead and create the first file. So you created an index.html file. Guess what? You don't even really need uh, a separate CSS file or anything like that. All you really need to do is do all your web development right in here. Type HTML, click HTML5, you get your starter template. At the top of uh, just before the closing head, you can put your style up here, just put it right there. And then if you got any JavaScript, custom JavaScript, put that before your closing body tag so it doesn't block the page. And you can just run it all here. So now like you really can just start typing your HTML, like hello HTML. You can start writing JavaScript. So you can say like alert, hello JavaScript. All right, so now you've written, you've written two of the three core technologies, and now with CSS, you can do the third one now. So let's go ahead and target the H1, make it a color of red. So what is my point here? My point is that one single file, you can learn how to become a web developer. Now, you're not going to be an expert. You're not going to be running full stacks and all that crap, but you got to start with this. And if you can get comfortable with these three, then you can move on to the other stuff. But if you can't get comfortable with these three, then you probably shouldn't move on to anything else because you're probably just going to be spending your wheels and wasting your time. So another thing, too, is now when I'm prototyping, I don't want to have to write all this uh, code from scratch. So there's got to be something out there that I can tap into that somebody's already written. So what do I need? I need a navigation bar. And I need that navigation bar to be responsive because if it doesn't work on a mobile device, then what the hell are you doing? So for quick prototyping, I'll just Google responsive nav bar code pen, pure CSS. Code pen's really, um, I think, and I did not mean to do that. All right, so here is an example of a responsive nav bar that was like the first thing I pulled up. So here you can see on the right-hand side, there is no JavaScript. There's no library. I don't need jQuery in order for this thing to work. I got some basic hover and the, it'll break down and, and it might be a good start. I don't know, but let's just go ahead and copy all this. And we're going to put it above our H1 since it's a nav. I can just paste that in there. And then we'll just grab all this CSS and put that inside the style tag. And before I paste these styles in here, I do want to show you that when you're debugging and looking at the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript you're writing, you're going to view that code in the browser to actually see how it's working. So just right click, say, Reveal in File Explorer. And then if you have your browser set, you should be able to just double click and open the page. So here's our custom JavaScript, the vanilla JavaScript we just wrote. So it says, hello, JavaScript. There's our hello HTML. I don't know what the hell this is. Oh, that's the guy that wrote that on CodePen. All right, so let's go ahead and paste that CSS in here so we can finish off the nav. And then switching back over to our page. And you can see we now get our navigation. So just like that, I didn't have to write any of that stuff from scratch. It saves me a lot of time. You could actually do that responsive code if you wanted to, or if it's open source and available. Uh, play around and prototype with it. There's going to be all kinds of different options that you can choose from. So another thing I like about CodePen for prototyping is like even when people write stuff and things that I'm unfamiliar with, like the Pug template engine right here, 
you could actually click the drop down arrow and then compile it so you can say view the compiled HTML and now it's a regular HTML and not the pug language and then you can do the same thing with the SAS. So this is using the new syntax for SAS and I can actually just go ahead and view the compiled CSS on that as well. So now I can go ahead and copy this and we don't need the body tag there so I'm not going to take that and I'm just going to grab all this stuff besides the body tag. So you have to know a little bit about HTML when you're doing this. And we're going to put this underneath the navigation. I'll get rid of the hello HTML actually. And I'm getting rid of this script as well. I don't need that either. All right, so grab the CSS. Now, as you can see, like clearly, like as you start getting things that you like, I mean, you should probably start separating things out as you're prototyping. So I'll be like something like this, like end. Uh, carousel all right and then going back over and you can see now that we've made this prototype of a web page that now has these the, all this code that was written for us we've done it in a matter of like seconds to minutes and it's just an easier way of me wrapping my head around like why not just prototype things this way and then when I get something that I like I can then worry about like minifying trying to make it a little bit more efficient prettier but that is basically my advice. If you're trying to master CSS, HTML, and JavaScript, why try to add a bunch of different libraries and frameworks and all this stuff that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to you right off the bat when these are the first three things that you need to learn? Now, this is daunting. There's a lot of code in there. It's a lot of like, it's all in one file, but at least you're not dealing with multiple files. You could abstract out all this CSS to its own file if you wanted to, or you could just keep it all in here. So whatever you're doing, however you like to learn, if you do want to learn with me, I recommend you check out my website, CodeHawk.com. I built all this stuff from the ground up from scratch, basically. Um, I mean, there's some frameworks and stuff that I'm using. But essentially what I did is I just incrementally, incrementally built this out. And I used the same exact uh, prototyping format to do it.